And now for our weekly news segment. All right. Um, we actually got some really interesting news for this week. And um, also, guys, before we get into the news section, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, you share. That helps a lot. Leave a comment. Um, these things help a lot. So make sure you do that. You know what? I was thinking of doing something. Tell me if this makes sense. If uh, we tell people when they leave a comment to leave a Monero address, and I'll like I'll tip I'll tip the my favorite comments. I'll tip any comments I I, I think are good if you leave a Monero address with the comment. I'm gonna try that. Okay, a little, little experiment here. Okay. Uh, um, so if you just like spam and leave a Monero address, I'm probably not gonna tip you. But if you tip, you know, say something that's productive or at least at least relevant. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you a small tip for for your comment to encourage participation. Okay. Well, I hope, and in the same time, I don't hope that you hope you run out of Monero. Yeah, in the regular YouTube comments, guys, not in the uh, in this live chat here because I won't be able to respond to that. I'm talking about in like the YouTube like YouTube. comment section, the static right. comments. All right, Tony. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so the first thing that we're going to discuss is from um, Shopping Bit. So um, this is the usage stats from for December 2023. This is the volume. Uh, Bitcoin is at 46%, XMR 41%, Lightning Network 91%, and Fiat 11%. So um, XMR to Bitcoin ratio is um, pretty good in Shopping Bit. Uh, then let's go over the coin cards. Uh, Bitcoin, 38%. XMR 29%, so it's pretty close to Bitcoin. Ethereum 17%, um, USDC 9%, Lightning Network 1.5%, Dogecoin 1%. Nobody's using Dash, nobody's using Solana, Dive, or anything like that. So I love uh, Zcash isn't even on the list. They don't even put it on the list. Yeah. <laughs> they don't even give it a zero. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. So uh, it seems like on most most websites that uh, accept cryptos, uh, crypto for uh, gift cards, uh, Bitcoin and Monero seem to be. No wait, go go back to the coin card. When you when you look at it broken down by America though, right? U.S. Can you maybe he usually tweets that with it? Maybe it's uh, yeah. Try to like view. I think, yeah, I think this is the overall. I don't think um, let's he usually see. tweets at the red. He shows overall, and then he shows like U.S. and then he shows Canada. Broken down by U.S. or Canada. Much. Maybe what he tweeted there. Wait, no. Yeah, I'm trying to see. No, that's a tweet there. Yeah, maybe in the. Um, no, yeah, right, right, right. in the tweet itself, there's that other one that he mentions. No, all right. No, I don't see. I didn't see any any uh, when I looked into it. So I think this is just like the general. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They didn't provide. Um, yeah, but then um, another thing from Coin Cards, they're feeling bullish, so they might add virtual card credit cards to Coin Cards. Oh, nice. Which is really nice. That's that's always nice to see. Be yet another way to spend your Monero. So they uh, just have the debit card option right now. Is that right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, and they, obviously they have other gift cards, but yeah, I guess they they haven't had this uh, the Visa, the Mastercard, the virtual credit card. So yeah, really I, nice. I yeah. Um, cake, cake has it, yeah. um, but yeah, that's sweet. Okay, next thing. Um, this is really interesting. So, and some of us were expecting it, and it came. So, I guess um, AI generated KYC um, videos. So, um, you can essentially just generate KYC, and then be able to. Um, to use that to get into whatever you want, Coinbase, Binance, whatever requires KYC. Now, um, somebody wrote something interesting in the in the comment section. It's not over. They will start to ask life proofs now. Inject right. them, sell the solution. <laughs> so, if they say inject the problem, sell the solution. Leave so the problem. Yeah, I don't know. The way I'm thinking about it, that was, <laughs> uh, it's kind of interesting. So I guess maybe there's going to be some they can inject something in your body and then that's going to be the proof that this is you and that is it's not some ai generated um what do i see or something i don't know it's not that far it's nothing is that far-fetched it, <laughs> it, 
I mean, you you hear you hear this talk on both sides of the political spectrum, you know, uh, politicians leading on, on the Democratic side and on the talking about this need to essentially get rid of the ability to be anonymous, right? There's, mm-hmm. there's concern there and connect. They want to KYC our uh, our identity. Uh, I, our usage of the internet. So starting with social media, but the internet in general, they don't want people to be able to function anonymously on the internet, especially with social media and obviously with crypto as well. Mm-hmm. They've made that very clear. You know, obviously Senator Warren is, is leading the way in that charge. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you're seeing like a lot of other Paul, like uh, Nikki Haley, right? So yeah. you might, who knows, she might become the Republican, the main Republican candidate if certain people get their way and she she said some ridiculous things about she basically she wanted to outlaw the ability to be anonymous on on social media oh my god these are these are her, these are the people that are going to be leading us uh so it's it's not that wild to think that they might try to go to extreme measures to limit our ability to avoid kyc so what I was thinking about it right now, um, what if when people will have Neuralink and then you're going to have an ID with the Neuralink and then they're not, they're not going to want a picture of you anymore because you can just generate one with AI, they're going to want your a, your ID from your Neuralink that is in your brain. And that's right, how right. you want to identify that that is you. Right. That could be something too. Um, I hope Elon Musk will <laughs> put an approved to that, but... Um, yeah, it's not, it's not too far-fetched. It's not too far-fetched. Um, now, Binance. Binance plays XMR and ready to delist zone. So let's go ahead and go on the article. So this is actually really interesting. Uh, essentially, um, they extended the monitoring tag to include more tokens. So those are uh, Aragon, Fire, Keeper, V1, MDEX, Mobile Coin, Reef, Vibe, Monero, Zcash, Horizon, um, I assume Zcash and all the rest of them are going to get out of this monitoring tag and then Monero is not going to escape it because it's not going to comply. Mm -hmm. So two things that are really interesting. Tokens with the monitoring tag exhibit notably higher volatility and and risks compared to other (laughs) listed tokens. The fact that they said higher volatility and risks, not or. And or at least, yeah. So they're assuming that Monero is volatile, which is not. It's, it was sense. really stable. Yeah. And then risks compared to other list, listed tokens. So you, you, you can't compare the risk, like quote unquote, risk that Monero brings to all the other ones. Then if you look below, Binance will conduct periodic project reviews and decide if the monitoring tag and the C tag should be added to or removed from tokens as per its latest findings. These criteria are considered during the review. One, commitment of team to project. <laughs> Okay, we have that. Level. <laughs> it gets funny. Um, level and quality of development activity. Got it. Trading volume and liquidity. Got it. Stability and safety of network from attacks. Got it. Networks as smart contract stability. Sure. Level of public communication. Yep, pretty strong. Responsiveness to our periodic due diligence requests. <laughs> I don't think we're going to do too well on that one. <laughs> <laughs> this one, no. Evidence of unethical, fraud, fraudulent conduct or negligence. Well, I guess. Oh my God. That's if we don't comply. And then contribution to a healthy and sustainable crypto, crypto ecosystem. So I guess we failed these three, especially because I guess we're not contributing to a healthy and sustainable crypto ecosystem because we're not complying. I mean, they, they talk about these things like cryptocurrencies are, are companies. And yes. so. It's like the the one that is actually the the most crypto like and cryptocurrency like and is decentralized like is the one that doesn't really pass their test. Like we need, you know, a CEO that's going to respond to us and mm-hmm. listen to us when we need to change things in the protocol. Yeah, that does not exist with Monero. It doesn't. So, you want to talk to the CEO? There's no CEO. You got to <laughs> you got to talk to a lot of anonymous people. So, um, there's no such thing. Yes, we're, yeah. we're not we're not as organized in that respect, uh, like like Zcash, right? We don't we don't have mm-hmm. a, a centralized entity that goes along with the coin um, that's there to be contacted. 
Go right, go right ahead and delist us. We'll just use ETH uh, XMR atomic swaps from um, what, was that lady, what was that lady's name? Um, the top oh. of the Neurotopia? Like, yeah. Oh my God. Uh, Amy. Uh, yeah. Oh, Elizabeth. 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 Yes. Elizabeth Banks, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. But again, somebody should, somebody, we should actually go on Binance and just tweet this and ask for um for a reasoning higher volatility and risks compared what is what is where is the high volatility there's no such thing in in monero it's not highly volatile yeah, but it, you know, obviously well that, that one is that they're dealing <laughs> they're threatening to delist it now you're seeing the volatility <laughs> like exactly. product of them. <laughs> yeah yeah but this is this is interesting so but okay predict okay let's make some predictions let's let's make it interesting so how many do you guys think? How many of these do you think will get out of the monitoring tag? Obviously, Monero is going to be delisted. Like we're not because it's not going to comply. But how many out of these do you do you guys think that they're going to get out of the monitoring tag? I think Zcash is going to be out and not. Be yeah, delisted. I think Zcash is going to is going to stay is stay going to stay on Binance, right? And not and not Zcash and Firo. I think is they're it? I think they're complying. Yeah. Yes, I think so. A lot of these elements I really don't know well enough to even say anything about them, but Same. if anything, they might just get, they're just like insignificant. So maybe they'll just get delisted for that. Hmm. If anybody knows more about these other coins, so uh, make sure you leave a comment on YouTube. And uh, like, so, so mo mobile coin, wasn't that a, for was that a fork of Monero? Oh, I do coin. believe so. Um, I want to say it was a fork of Monero for Signal. Yeah, uh, for, six, for the single yeah. private messenger. Yep. Yeah. 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 So go ahead in the YouTube section. Um, if anybody knows more about these, or if you if you'd like to drop in your prediction, that's gonna be interesting. So write it down on the YouTube section, and then we're gonna pull it up and and we can discuss. I mean, the it. other thing too is interesting, right? If this was all just a charade, like Body was alluding to, right? That they, you know, they're gonna get. They needed a way to to mess with the Monero price, so they threatened a a delisting. They cause volatility, gives them the chance to buy it more Monero. Um, maybe this was all a charade, right? And at the end of the day, they'll, 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 whatever, they'll leave Monero on the exchange, and it'll just have this this tag associated with it. Maybe, but, but with um, always with always that looming threat of that it could be delisted any day, right? Kind of like I, China when China banned Bitcoin multiple times, and then mm -hmm. eventually it stopped having the effect on um, on the market. I put a post on uh, Mastodon the other day when uh, when this whole thing happened, and I'm like, congratulations to those who sold. Uh, I was talking about Bitcoin at the time, so it was like, congratulations to those who sold Bitcoin. BlackRock appreciates you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember, but I think it was like four or five months ago, Body and I were talking about like the next logical step for them to push the price down was to threaten delistings. Mm -hmm. And here it is at, at a time where they're trying to create a gap in uh, like the Bitcoin Monero ratio. They're trying to cover a whole bunch of shorts was another prediction that we had. And at the same time, they are loudly, loudly procro proclaiming that they have this desire to delist. But they're also not delisting because they have to be able to buy the Monero. Right. And so we've been talking about like a delisting for two, three weeks now. And most of the crypto community is just just slurping it up like, oh, the delisting is coming. It's going to happen. It's going to, you know, um, but wasn't it like six months ago or five months ago when you were talking about XMR Bazaar and you had first brought up the idea of being able to request something in exchange for Monero. Right. Mm -hmm. And I said, um, most of the people in, for example, Alaska who want to on ramp onto Monero, who would never, ever, ever put their information into an exchange website or anything like that. I mean, they'll do, they'll do cash, you know, anytime they have been so hungry for a way for them to sell goods and services, like a really good example that anyone can do up here when they want cash is they just do like firewood or whatever. Right. Um, people selling firewood for Monero would be like a giant, like on ramp in Alaska, right? <laughs> um, and and a platform like XMR Bazaar would be huge. So the thing is, is they all you see how they all connect though, where 
they're this bloviating we're gonna delist you be afraid be very afraid they're they're it's basically like them threatening to shoot their own foot right they're like we are so going to cut our foot off if you guys don't do what we want you to do and get that price down right meanwhile you know we've already come up with solutions for this stuff but it kind of ties into the first story about the lightning network and the lightning network just drives me absolutely insane and i i've i'd say probably for the last four or five months became well i've I've pretty much always hated it since the first time i used it but it's just gotten worse and worse in my mind as i've watched it become less and less usable this idea that lightning network is going to solve any of the bitcoin problems in fact i don't know of one that it doesn't make worse right but the idea that Joe Normie is going to be able to figure out how to start opening up node channels on their lightning wallets and get, you know, and be able to make transactions privately through the, the lightning network at some point of sale system. This isn't a Bitcoin conference, people like these people are expecting to use one transaction a week in Bitcoin. And they're supposed to know about open channels and how to find a secure like node operator you have to be so delusional if you think that lightning network is going to solve anything right and then on top of that look at how much it's used right now the places that crypto is actually used to buy stuff they can't break two percent bitcoin core is still being used way more than lightning network for individual transactions that Oh, it's a way around high fees and it's a way around, it's like, well, nobody's using it. Nobody, even, I mean, even most Bitcoin enthusiasts will be like, well, I'll admit, yes, a lot of the time I have trouble using the Such lightning a- network. And wasn't it Seth for privacy like three <laughs> weeks ago is like, I consider myself like an aficionado of this stuff and I can't even get lightning network to work a lot of the time. And it's like, at what point do you throw in the towel and say, okay, this shit is broken. It's never going to work. It's going to take more effort to fix it than it is to just like abandon this project entirely. But they've sunk so much time and money into pretending like it's going to fix something. It, it it would just be asinine, right? Yeah. Well, obviously, what you do is you give them... Down. Go ahead. Sorry. Obviously, you give them you give them custodial solutions like Wallet of Satoshi, and uh, they don't own their crypto anymore. That's the obvious answer. And what a name, right? Wallet of Satoshi, the custodial <laughs> wallet. Like, <laughs> if he's not dead, rolling in his grave, then he's probably trying to figure out who to murder that came up with that name, right? Like, S- Satoshi is holding your coins. I'm having uh, Paul Stork on the show. I think this coming week. He's he's you know uh, adamant uh, adamantly opposed to I wouldn't say opposed to lightning but he he's really been one of the the strong voices pointing out all the flaws and he's a, a Bitcoin dev I don't know if you guys have heard of him Paul Stork Alaskan on do you know him I think I heard him talking with uh, there was like a interview with the Ronin Dojo guys and then. I'll throw uh, it. I'll throw out a tweet because I'd love to get people's uh, input on what I should be asking them. Because I don't. I honestly, I don't follow it that closely. It's just mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm focused on Monero. Um, all I know is it's it's not it's not working as intended. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that my well, from what I'm I'm witnessing is that it's that that idea is is really growing among Bitcoiners, right? Like there's mm-hmm. like there seems to be a growing movement there people are like wait a minute does lightning it's, really, like, it's been so long now but i it had to be like way back in 2013 or something when like the idea of layer two solutions became like all the rage and it was also when there was talk about like well you could use blockchain analytics to like eliminate the privacy of bitcoin and all this stuff and it was pretty much when a lot of us started to be like i don't think bitcoin is going to be the answer right um do you think we get to a point like where lightning is is talked about as oh man remember that remember that fucking attempt remember that like well, I mean isn't it already it is like one of the you know <laughs> it's I, I mean I, I honestly think that it is already and I think that it's a huge blind spot in some of the people who consider themselves believers right they're 
like they're having a serious issue coming to terms with the fact that <laughs> something that they believe that would eventually come around all that's happening is you're getting kind of i mean we could call it like the windows effect right where windows is becoming so bloated and it's becoming so many software elements that are layered on top of each other right where the minute you put it on a computer just like the minute you put lightning network onto bitcoin you're adding so many things that are a problem right <laughs> like and and it's it it, it it the overhead of learning how to use lightning is absolutely ridiculous right like um i was fortunate enough to be on a call with tux and a guy came over and he was like yeah i remember that monero you were talking to me about and he you know and, and i introduced him to tux and he was sitting there on a call and this man is 90 years old and he came over to get a graphing phone right and he's like i'd also like to learn about monero in three sentences i explained to him how it worked and in two sentences, I explained to him what the utility would be. And then it took about five minutes to get him to actually use Monero in a transaction, right? If you tried to teach the average normie about how to use lightning, it would never work. It would, there's just no way it would never work. <laughs> That'd be a good video to make. Just go out on the street, like onboard people to Monero, get them using it, teach them from, from zero versus trying to like go the lightning you, route. You realize you've kind of already made that video, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> no, but do, do, do it versus lightning, like show, show the, the two different approaches. <laughs> that would be like a two hour video of people <laughs> asking like, what, what's the, I thought we were doing Bitcoin. What's this lightning? Well, why do I need that? I'm like, okay, well, how does it work? And then they're just like eyes glaze over like, I gotta go now. Like, <laughs> kind of but monero's got to start focusing on the remittance market too you know i mean obviously i know where people are doing but when things. we're in mexico that's like pretty much 80 percent of what i was talking to the locals about like yeah. um you know you yourself may not be in the remittances business but you know a lot of your neighbors and friends would be very interested in realizing that this is a thing and honestly, I shot myself in the foot because I think that was the reason why a lot of them wouldn't sell me Monero at the end of the conference. <laughs> Tony, keep it moving. One thing that I want to say before we uh, keep moving, um, I really love Alaska Anand's approach to explain in as few sentences as possible how Monero works because it's, it just works very simply and you don't need to overly complicate it. Um, so if you do it this way and you explain it in a very simple way, people would be turned on to Monero. And then even if they're not going to use Monero now, at least if, if you put the seed, that is a, it's a form of money that you can use that nobody can see what you do with it. And that is completely private. Um, FBI, CIA, nobody can get into it and you're protected by it. And like they don't even need to download Cake Wallet or Monero Wallet or get Monero in that instant. If you just plant that seed, eventually they're going to think about it oh i i there. had another one this week that i i know we're trying to move but i really wanted to share this because i'd used it before but it was the first time i used it in the presence of a feminist right <laughs> um and i couldn't believe how well it works so if you've ever heard the great equalizer argument about guns um there's a famous quote about the real purpose of gunpowder is to make every man tall right and the idea was is like, you know, a five foot two woman is just as dangerous with a firearm as like a six foot four, 300 pound man, right? The idea of a great, great equalizer. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't realize how much this mattered to feminists, but I was like, you know, a woman trying to protect her wealth or trying to escape an abusive relationship. The one thing about Monero that's absolutely incredible is the fact that it cannot be stolen and no one can verify whether or not you even have it right and i what and this chick probably just hates me right <laughs> and i saw her eyes light up when she realized like oh wait a minute like this is money that acts as a great equalizer this is money that would allow the most vulnerable people to prevent from being exploited 
and I didn't even have to point out how like you know the government is the problem and all that stuff. Of course, she's thinking about like these evil men cannot steal this poor woman's money or whatever. But it doesn't matter. The, the great equalizer argument seems to work really well for some people that might be on the fence about its utility. That is that is a great great uh, universal point to make. I mean, that's what encryption is at the end of the day, too, right? It's a it's a great e equalizer. So the government fears it. It puts the power back into the people's hands. I see drunk dial me. Um, I think I added you to stage. I'll add you again. Uh, yeah, please, please hop on. Yeah. Um, but you know which coin is not going to do all those? Zcash. So um, Zcash compliant privacy coin model is dead in the water and doesn't work anymore. That's what Cypher just said. Drunk dial me. I, I muted your mic just because it sounded loud, but yeah, uh, speak up when you want to. Okay. Um, so the Winklevoss twins, regular, regulators more comfortable with Zcash <laughs> than Monero. They said, obviously, we listed Zcash, said a long time Bitcoin advocates. We didn't attempt to list Monero, and we felt that Zcash was a privacy coin that we could get our regulators comfortable with. And um, somebody under the name of Zork said, in order to provide the world of privacy, one has to be compliant. And then Z um, something by Zcash Maximalist, yes, ZKP can increase a certain level of financial risk for money laundering. This is why ECC has always worked with the government. Zcash has both transparent and private functions. Zcash um, is always prepared with technology and philosophy for the future. <laughs> so... Um, regulars do prefer zcash over over monero yeah i mean that's that's an old article but still you know that's the that's the ethos over there mm -hmm. hey um, guys drunk dial me hey hey, what's going on? hey i'm just i'm just dropping in to propose a hashtag monero squeeze since we're talking about the sexes <laughs> uh covering their shorts and trying to suppress the price because they're illiquid because of their fraud <laughs> their paper monero Kind of play off of that silver squeeze hashtag and the Wall Street bets familiarity. Yeah, <laughs> I'm all about it, but I worry that we might be a little too late. Um, I think that they already did their price pushing enough to at least cover some of the paper, and I think that they can dollar over the rest of it. However, it would be a useful propaganda piece. Um, this is one of those situations where um monero's distributed nature makes it difficult to rally the troops quickly and it was one of the reasons why i was proposing like having you know a, a set goal as a like annualized goal and like a six month goal i don't remember when that was like last week or the week before um now I, as a propaganda piece it would be amazing but i would be surprised if they haven't covered a lot of their paper short problems I think they don't wait for the price to go down as much as they used to because these these uh, verbal diarrhea weapons of theirs are becoming less effective and they know it. Yeah, I was uh, proposing for the pr propaganda um, gains. We can pair it with Monero Run. So hashtag Monero Run, hashtag Monero Squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> okay. for, for the future because we know this stuff is going to be happening again. And cycles get it out there all right let's talk about bank of spain now so this is interesting um bank of spain essentially wants to make their own cbdc separate from the digital euro um so spain central bank bank banco de españa has chosen its collaborators a year after publishing an, an open call for partners to participate in central bank digital currency tests on January 3rd, the central bank published a resolution announcing its partnership with uh, Chico Bank, Abanca, and Ad Adhera blockchain. Um, essentially, and this is interesting. So the pilot of the wholesale CBDC will take place in the next six months and will feature the simulation of the processing and settlement of interbank payments with a single tokenized wholesale CBDC and by exchanging several wholesale CBDCs issued by different central banks. Essentially, uh, the Spanish CBDC program is unique as it was publicly stated to be independent of the digital euro project that would cover all economies in the eurozone if implemented. So it's interesting how they're working on their own CBDC uh, separate to, to the digital euro. And I wonder if 
Um, I wonder what's going to happen to the countries that are not part of the Eurozone. So, for example, Romania is not part of the Eurozone, and I hope that it's not going to be part of it. Um, are we going to have the Romanian CBDC? Are we going to cover that <laughs> on the news eventually? That's going to be interesting. I don't think it's going to come anytime soon. Um, so it'll be interesting if the countries from the Eurozone will have their own CBDCs as well, besides the digital euro. And then what's going to happen to the countries that are not part of the Eurozone? Like Albania and um, are they going to have their own CBDCs? Albania is actually going to be at the moment. Albania is going to have is going to trend towards more digital money. That's what I think things will get dark because Albania is so cash reliant. When I was there um, like two years ago, I couldn't even use my card at all in most places. It's just cash only everywhere. Yeah, so, that's cool. Yeah, like cash heavy. Like, and it's better to use their, their currency too. Um, yeah, but there were many times in which I had money, but just in my card, and then I didn't have any more cash, so I couldn't couldn't even get anything to drink or anything. <laughs> um, so that, that's going to be interesting in the future. Now, the next one is on the right to a self-hosted wallet. Crypto laws Congress should pass in 2024. This is from Nicholas Anthony. Um, essentially, Nicholas wrote... Um, five um five let's say new year's resolutions for the government that he would like to have implemented and i think we would as well uh, let's see if they're actually going to come to fruition any of them the first one would be the congress should formally establish that the federal reserve does not have the authority to launch a central bank digital currency the second congress should rein in the federal reserve's activity in general although the law requires the federal reserve to recoup its costs when it launches a new initiative whether that's, hap that's happening can be an open um, question. The Fed now was actually like a really expensive project. It costs around um, half a billion dollars to, to develop. Uh, I didn't know that. Um, third, Congress should clarify what exactly the term legal tender means in practice. Far too often, people are confused by the term and make the mistake of thinking that others are required to accept US currency whenever it is presented. In reality, the dollar's legal tender status only denotes its accessibility, um, acceptability sorry, uh, for the payment of taxes, fines, and contracts. In fact, the Federal Reserve itself addressed this confusion on its frequently asked uh, questions page. Fourth, Congress should prevent any agency from restricting the use of self-hosted wallets. Holding cryptocurrency in a self-hosted wallet is merely the digital e equivalent of holding physical cash in a traditional wallet. This is very, very important. Um, yeah. Some government officials have not been happy with the limits on current financial surveillance and thus sought to intrude on this space. Um, fifthly, Congress should remove the laundry list of exceptions from the right to Financial Privacy Act. Fans of creative currency and advocates of civil liberties are likely excited when they learn of the right to Financial Privacy Act in the United States. Where previous history effectively uh, gave the green light of, for sweeping financial surveillance. This law was meant to establish that financial activity is indeed protected. Yet the law was rendered largely useless because it includes a long list of exceptions. Um, yeah. How does it say? Wait, what does it say? It says it could fix the problem by doing what? I just... um, Congress can fix this problem by striking the exceptions and leaving the rest of the law as it stands. Oh, it pertains to, to his fifth point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so these five reforms cover a great deal of ground, preventing the unauthorized launch of a CBDC, reining in the Federal Reserve's expansionary tendencies, clarifying illegal thunder applications, preventing restrictions on self-hosted wallets, and establishing financial privacy protections can certainly seem like a tall order, which it is. I think those uh, are some good, good points. I think uh, very good points. I think some 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 presidential candidates would currently align with all those. I think DeSantis, uh, mm -hmm. Ramaswamy. I wonder if Trump. I don't think Trump would would align with these things. <laughs> you know, that's like there's all these like hardcore Trumpers out there. The guy is not. Mm -hmm. He's not super aligned with liberty, guys. Mm -hmm. really let's not let's not forget who did uh, Operation Warp Speed, right? With uh, with the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, twenty twenty four is gonna be it's gonna be interesting. When it comes to this. I'd be curious to know if RFK Jr. would align with all of them. I think I think uh, Vivek definitely would. 
would agree with this. I think DeSantis would too. I think RFK too. I think. I think I'd RFK too. Yeah, I'd be surprised. I don't know where he would disagree. Mm -hmm. uh, the paper vigilante said, "I think RFK is more aligned with with liberty." Uh, yeah, I think so too. Yeah, no, I, he definitely I is. He is. He's. He said. He's. I think he said some like troubling a, a couple of things. Where I was like, "Wait, what?" I thought you were, <laughs> so you were a little bit more liberty than that. Um. So he. I mean, everybody's got their things. So we're gonna we're gonna have to see. Yeah. Um, next thing, let's talk about the new crypto tax reporting obligation. Oh yeah, this is crazy. Mm, so, if you receive 10k or more in crypto, you now have an obligation to <laughs> report a transaction, including names, addresses, social security numbers, etc. Oh my God, to the IRS within 15 days under threat of a felony charge. Felony charge. I didn't receive 10k, and uh, I didn't receive 10k. I received 100 Monero. <laughs> I don't this use is, dollars. This is like very real. Like, let me just say, I'm personally affected by that. <laughs> like, instantly. <laughs> I was supposed to, I'm supposed to get my Monero CCS paid out, right? That the one that I've done, uh, you know, that I've been working on for years. I'm finally requesting payment. Um. That's going to be interesting, you know, when, when I get sent. So who, who what uh, social security number is going to be provided for that? Um, and it's it's very public. I'm out there as completing the CCS and looking for payment. This really goes to towards anybody who's in Monero that's publicly receiving funds. That's more than this amount. So that should be interesting. Hmm. But you know the way the way Jer Jer what uh, Brito is basically saying here, like that, that this law is is as of January first, it uh, self actualizes and you know it, it comes into effect, even though they haven't really even described how how thing you know the different scenarios and how things should be done. Like they don't even have the form created that you're supposed to be filled filling out. It's just a traditional cash form. That you'd fill out for if you you know received more than ten thousand in cash. They don't even have like a, an extra field for cryptocurrency. I mean, what's the scenario? You know, there's all these there's all these crazy scenarios where people may not even have the ability to KYC the the, the sender. Um, so we'll see where this goes. Yeah, I don't know if this other post you're pulling up. I think it was somebody else that kind of like spoke about it as well and saying things aren't really clear as to what what's going to happen yet. Uh, they actually maybe maybe it doesn't get enacted because it's hmm. uh, coin center is gonna gonna fight fight back against it we'll see where that goes but as as written or proposed it's pretty pretty wild hmm. pretty aggressive uh, body body asks a very good question does this apply to all persons or all businesses it applies to all i'm gonna add body to stage it applies to all it applies to individuals, but it goes into detail. Yeah. Jerry covers this. It goes into detail, um, or if you look, kind of look at what's what's implied there is if if it's people practicing business, right? So anybody is practicing. Mm -hmm. So it applies to individuals that are, um, you know, in business practices. Mm -hmm. So okay. yes, applies to individuals. Yeah, and they can. They can modify that uh, definition too. Oh, if it's over ten thousand dollars, that was the business sort of transaction because it's higher. Yeah, what do so you say? Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe That's like fine. you know, it's a higher number. So then they're gonna, even if you know what he said isn't the case, they can maybe change the definition and say, you know what, if it was over ten thousand, that's like a business transaction. So you get affected even like individuals. I might Individual. be thinking about. Go ahead, buddy. I might be thinking about the wrong form, but I had seen a post. Um, I think it was like form 8003 or something like that. And it talked about cash. And then like there was a, there was like another section on the reverse side or somewhere on the IRS website that talked about like, I don't know, defining cash or defining who's covered by it. And it looked I read it through and it looked like it was specifically talking about um, businesses that that are taking cash payments for um you know, services or products, but it didn't say anything about like specific, specifically about people, individuals, um, you know, taxpayers in the sense of like, 
Yeah, you know, like Jerry, Jerry Brito. Um, he did. I, I did read it. He was, you know, whether or not you agree with him, but he, he, what he pointed out seemed to be pretty damn damning to the effect that it applies to people that are practicing. Like, so if you're if if you're an individual and you do something that's considered business, it applies to you, right? So, like me getting paid out by the Monero CCS for work I've done would be considered a business activity. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of nuance there, and I haven't I haven't really looked at it. Yeah. And of course, we know how much these guys love to liberally interpret their laws uh, or their <laughs> their statutes or whatever. Yeah. But this is another pretty big shot by the by the state against uh, people using crypto in the way it's supposed to be used. In a lot of ways, I got to say that um, you know there was a time when, and it wasn't even that long ago, where I was like, I hope that they enact. You know, I hope that we get that someone less tyrannical gets in power, and I hope that uh, the needle starts moving back a little bit towards liberty. I'm completely against that now. I want them. I want Biden to win. It would be the best thing for the United States. Um, I want them to continue making as many ridiculous laws and statutes that cannot be complied with. That you literally, that people like just in the course of ordinary activity like this are unable to comply with. You, mm. you literally cannot get a tax identifier number from the Monero's CCS. Um, should I, should I just fill out? I mean, I'm going to, I guess what, what I'll have to do is just fill out a ridiculous form and send it in to like show an attempt. Yeah. I mean, that would <laughs> hypothetically in the event that they came out. I, I should just or, show up. I should just make it a video. Cause like, I don't even think it's clear as to where it's supposed to be sent at this point. I should just like, <laughs> like go, go to Washington DC and like ask around. <laughs> like, where <are> you <laughs> do you know where I submit this? Go to the Republican party. <laughs> <laughs> I've been around really hard all day long. People, I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, I really do. Like, honestly, I support them to create as many stupid laws because the more that people are like, wait, I, I can't even comply with this if I wanted to, that keeps their mind open and limber to say, wait, well, what else should I be disobeying? What else should I not be complying with? But mm. as soon as like some halfway, half assed libertarian esque candidate gets elected, you know, the other half of the political system is like, well, we got our guy in power now. We we can go back to complying with everything because uh, you know they'll they'll fix everything eventually. I believe in the system again. Like we just need the most ridiculous, over the top stupidity to keep mm -hmm. people like vigilant in the mentality. Like no, 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 no. We we just need to be disobeying here. Hmm. Well, in mastering Monero, like uh, not mastering Monero, and uh, the Monero standard, the author talks about the uh, two hundred and fifty year empire cycle and that how we're just about at the end of that at 20, 2030, 20, 2026, right in that area would be the end of the 250 year empire cycle and the United States is headed towards demise, whether we like it or not. And by the way, that's a really good book. So let me actually, yeah, I got, I got, I got mine coming. Yeah, out. it is a good book. A really good book made by, um, Stoic. So guys, it's this, this book is really new. It just came out because before we only had, um, mastering Monero, which is more technical, but this is this, so this is called the Monero standard and it offer it's kind of like uh, mass mm, the Bitcoin standard, and it's not so much technical, but it offers you more, more of a different. Um... Yeah, but the I, the way I put it is like um, mastering Monero is about, but more like what Monero is, how it works, how it functions under the hood. The Monero standard is why Monero is important in the first place. I think he does a really good job of of discussing the why, like why should we even care about Monero. I think he did a great job with it. Yes, yes, he did. Uh, we have a company. My company, Madison Digital Services, is introducing to the market a point of sale solution with the Monero first strategy. And if I sell systems, and I sell systems from System Seventy Six, that we are, re, are we are a reseller. Cool. Let us know more, man. I just uh, jump up on stage. Tell us, tell us about your project. Okay. Um. Last, last, so last thing that I want to discuss for uh, the new section. Um, this is going to be really interesting, and I'm sure we're going to talk about it um, next time. Um, this is the biggest um, farmers pr protest in Ger that Germany has ever seen, and it's going to take effect on January um, 8th, and they're currently preparing for it. Um, this is Germany or this is the Netherlands? This is Germany. So it, it started It started in the Netherlands, but now more and more countries are are doing the same and Germany is is one of them. So uh, Eva wrote, uh, multiple farmers associations, the train drivers union and the trucking industry have announced they'll be mo mobilizing against the federal government's plan 
to cancel for agriculture diesel, cut vehicle tax exemptions and increase truck tolls and carbon taxes. There are also countless calls on social media for a general strike against the federal German government demanding they step down. Um, so they're currently uh, preparing for it and it's it's going to be... Those, those are all... Wait, we we'll go back to that image. See, all, those are all potential Monero customers, right? <laughs> those are all <laughs> Monero early adopters. Yes. At least part of the, or the early wave. Understanding the importance firsthand. I mean, the trucker rally was it was a huge eye opener for people yes. in Canada. So this, these movements aren't over. And they're not over. We just saw uh, drunk dial me. Are you, are you there? Are you still there, drunk dial me? Wow! Look at that. I wanted to ask drunk dial me a question. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's still there. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Crazy. So many. It's gonna it's gonna be crazy on Jan January eighth. When is that even? I think that's gonna be like a it should be Monday. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I was just, I was just gonna tie in. I saw um, that guy from the Lancaster reporter reporter posting about that farm that got shut down. Oh yeah, Amos yeah. Miller. Yeah. Now that's not yeah. the Miller Bio Farm, is it? Because those are the guys that we were working with, Miller Bio Farm, and that was also in Lancaster. But that's not the same thing, I don't think, right? Um, I'm actually I'm a bit confused on that and whether there's two Miller Farms. But yeah. uh, the the guy we were I, talking about ages ago from. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Sorry. What's that? The guy ahead, we were talking to. The guy we were talking to ages ago with uh, Farm Match. Um who was setting up those private buyer clubs for Amish farmers. Um, he was interested in moving his platform to accepting Monero a while ago. And I, at this point, I'm ready to just pay for it, the integration that happened. Um, but these guys have been in, uh, in battles with the FDA and having SWAT raids by the FDA and uh, everyone else since the Ron Paul days, early, early Ron Paul days, like, early 2000s so they're not backing down they have everyone sign a very extensive contract that it's a private club to exempt them from fda regulations etc but any fda is violating their own uh regulations and laws and how they're basically confiscating evidence not evidence but um, food so yeah that, that's been in the news as well yeah and then I saw Fiat, you and Fiat Demise suggested they should they should run a Kuno because they were using some uh, the guy from the Lancaster Press or whatever it is set up a donation fund for for them to help them. Like, yeah, give yeah. give send go. I think. Yeah, give send go. Which I assume that's just like all credit cards, right, and stuff like that. I don't even think crypto is involved in it, but an option on on there. Uh, this is perfect use case for Kuno to for for Monero fundraising to shine. I tried tweeting the guy out there. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if you have a relationship with them, but we should we should try to get them to to do that. I think it's it would be a nice use case. Um, I could try to get them as a guest. I think we could maybe get yeah. someone as a guest if you're interested. Yeah, that that reporter would be good because he I think he's the one that made the go the the GoFundMe too. Give send go. Or yeah, give send go is basically the Christian uh, GoFundMe. So the okay. platform people and blah blah blah. Oh, okay. But the banks, the banks still do. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and they get, they get the platform give send go. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, uh, unless they move the Monero. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so it's, it's just a good eye opener there. Who's uh? I see somebody else we have on here with just like a random, random character. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Uh, fine. Uh, just thought to come over here. Okay, cool. The thing, Any, yeah, what? things are gonna get really bad these days. What, what, why, why do you say that? What do you, uh, delisting will happen, but yeah, Monero, I think it will survive. Uh, since it's a really privacy coin, and I think the culture, the culture will keep it alive. But if something happens to the US, like I'm from India, and it's mm -hmm. like much worse. Mm -hmm. No gun rights, no nothing, no privacy coin. 
But mm. I think, yeah, as long as US with its guns, as well as the culture of privacy or whatever freedom are left, I think it will still survive. But yeah, things are gonna get worse. Mm. What, what I hear you on the show, you know, it's an indication to me that things will survive, right? Here you are, you found your way to, to Monero, you found your way to the Monero Topia. Yeah, I think uh, everyone will be on list one way or the other. But yeah, I've been in crypto space for a long time. But yeah, I've been in the shadows, like a uh, background. <laughs> but yeah, I think it will get really bad very soon. What do you what where, where do you think Monero's headed? Do you think so? You think uh, I think yeah, I think Monero did something very correct. Means the culture of mandatory privacy and like mm -hmm. extreme privacy culture. I think that will actually it will show. Like even those other coins like Zcash as well as Firo, they are having like discussion. Like you'll see their development forms. Every time they their people will start talking about Monero's doing so well because it's mandatory privacy coin. So yeah, I think Monero like that it can help. And I think for privacy coin or even like if we want to not have CBDC or like more surveillance shoved down our throat, I think Monero really needs to lobby the gun community in the US. Otherwise, I don't see any way it, things will get better. Hmm. Because yeah, it will be a natch. Yeah, it will be like a natural, like a de uh, defense, like people, since guns, they're an actual product and people need to buy them. And they're already getting surveillance, they're getting harassed anyway. So I think privacy coin Monero, as well as with the gold community, as well as even the gun community, I think it will really drive the adoption. I agree. I agree. A lot of people mentioning that today. Um, yeah, couldn't agree more. I said it I said it earlier. Hit me up, MoneroTopiaProtonMail.com if you think there's any conferences we should be attending to represent Monero, to teach people about Monero. Please. Yeah, I think even like, uh, I think there are like some uh, streamers, they are doing like uh, Naomi Brockwell, as well as some of those other guys, they are doing like privacy uh, mm -hmm. tutorials. I think, uh, I think co coordinating with them as well as employing some of their format just to uh, get to those gun community. Because many people like I'm seeing, many people are just scattered doing their own thing. And even in the political space, pe people are just talking about Bitcoin and barely mm. people are mentioning privacy coin. Mm. So yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's definitely still niche. Yeah, uh, like, uh, yeah, I, I think you need some kind of technical knowledge to see uh, like, a, uh, it's a uh, like transparent ledger. I think people know, but they just want to keep quiet. I think they're afraid of what. But I think, yeah, we really have to push in those political space as well as especially the gun community. If mm. Monero penetrates the libertarian conference, those uh, those liberty minded guys, as well as the second amendment guys, I think it will really help drive the adoption. Yeah, I think we made a lot of headway in the general liberty community. I mean, we, we experienced it ourselves with going to these liberty conferences, um, and we, we saw firsthand kind of the, the Monero meme growing there. Um, but yeah, we we need to we need to spread spread further. I, I like all the ideas being discussed today about doing more in the in the you know the pro 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 two A community. Mm -hmm. um, it's something we should be focusing on. How about yeah, like? You said you're from India. India is a large cash-based society. Um, oh, yeah. You know, we had like a 20,000-year history yeah. unwritten history of gold. Like, yeah, like privacy coin, if we like don't focus even on the number going up, if we focus yep. if, if we focus on the culture of like just uh, 
the function of a privacy coin or just the function like there is so much lack of privacy and if we just go a little back to the old culture of like having cash or like having gold transaction or just buying guns with privacy coin i think it will really drive the adoption then you can have like farmers buying selling vegetables people are buying their grocery stuffs with uh, monero i think it will drive the circular economy i think for monero it's very important to have the circular economy mm -hmm. so yeah i think i think monero or any kind of privacy coin if it needs to suck seed i think in the us it needs to penetrate the 2a community otherwise i don't think things will get better it will get really worse the things yeah. happening all around the world uh, it will get much worse you're making some very good points i have a question for you actually how is the monero scene around where you live uh, do people know about monero do you know or oh uh, if you look over here it's like uh, barely and if people are there it's in the shadows yeah mm -hmm. yeah this is the point i'm trying to write because like india is traditionally a, a large cash economy they they understand gold as a store of value right that's very much in their culture buying gold Oh, there is even like underground markets of guns but yeah i think uh, if you want to preserve the culture i think the latin america communities as well as the global south as well as even like even the north canada or like us i think you have to penetrate those like political space as well as the 2a community without guns i don't think oh, we kind of lost them um yeah i agree i agree i i i my my current thinking is really i think like globally the online you know and i think Askanon, i think he also wants to come to the stage yeah he's also pinging in message okay yeah i thought he was up well, I don't, yeah he wants to, wants to get, get yeah to i think i actually keep getting kicked off from fidgeting with my webcam it was driving me nuts yeah i think the digital id thing as well as the like uh the privacy which will get degraded over time in the internet i think to rectify that or like to get some semblance of the old ways back i think monero or at least the culture of privacy it has to be deeply penetrated inside the 2a community as well as the political space otherwise things will get really bad so I actually wanted to throw out some things about the India thing. And I know I had actually touched on this when we had that other guy um, who had like the strange Fed like vibe going on. But anyway, that other guy from <laughs> India like a couple of weeks ago. Wait, which um, guy? I don't remember which guy that was. Was he just a random? Uh... Yeah, he had his hat and his glasses and his laptop had all kinds of background monitoring software because he does oh yeah local monero is working fine I, in india over here also yeah. but the thing is yeah soon the crackdown will begin like uh, well, like they have trying to delist all the exchanges and over here it's like fully surveils and everything you, you remember how a lot of the time when people talk about remittances, they always think of it in terms of remittances for like U.S. to Mexico or U.S. to El Salvador or something. What most people don't realize is uh, all former crown countries. So in other words, anything that used to be recently part of the British Empire have some strange economic ties to one another. So, for example, it wasn't that long ago that you could actually get a zero interest loan that would be paid off uh, by the government over a period of time where you could start a business in one crown country if you came from another crown country. So it was really popular for Indians to go to, for example, Canada and either like buy a convenience store or buy a like a truck, like a semi truck and get their class A and start driving it. And then there would be a lot of remittances that would go from Canada to India. Or another thing is uh, a lot of people will get jobs in India um, as like, you know, an entry level tech service person. And then they'll use that money for remittances to send workers to, for example, Saudi Arabia. 
Um, a lot of people don't realize that the remittance market in India is actually much larger by volume. And so there's an even larger economic incentive for Indian workforces to be more interested in the remittance aspect of Monero. But another thing is connecting a bank account uh, for the purposes of liquid uh, of the liquidation of the Monero, right? Um, Monero offers ways to completely bypass all of that. But then outside of that, um, India has a huge bribe problem. Uh, like you can basically bribe anyone for anything, especially if they're like a government official or at the official level. Some of these people will set their price target for their bribe based on how much money they think you have. Or uh, another thing about bribes is in order to collect your money, you first have to agree to pay a bribe as a percentage of it. But Monero solves that problem too. There is no place in the world that I know of with a better argument for adopting Monero than India, with the exception of maybe like North Korea or Cuba, right? Or play. Um, but even in that case, India has like a larger pool of economic incentive. Oh, yes. Um, like uh, in India, like uh, even like as culture wise, like 100 years, you'll see the culture of having like a Havala system, like. The thing is, uh, people will just move around like gangs of people or like mm -hmm. black market stuff. They will just move like pure currency, like one people will just give you currency and you will contact the other guy. Yeah, that culture is still there. But yeah, I think uh, we uh, I think legally it's not possible, but underground, I think Monero will still survive. But yeah. If there's, we have like a, there's a stratification issue that I would like you to touch on, though, because this is just my understanding. Every time I've ever dealt, well, I, I probably shouldn't talk anymore. But the, um, it, as far as my understanding in India, uh, the stratification of the population as far as like the intelligent are extremely hyper intelligent. And then the ignorant masses are a level of ignorant masses that. Oh, yeah, that's true. Like, like who like, will even understand the basic concept of liberty or like what can actually preserve it like gun rights? Like they don't have that much means. Yeah, generally the public over here is very like learned or like highly educated. Yeah, there, there's, there's a, it's a really interesting place for a lot of reasons. But one of another really bizarre part about India is it's more divided regionally than even the United States. So people think of like this balkanization going on in the United States, where like Wyoming is so different than New York. Most people in the United States can't even imagine what's what what the like something ripe for division. Um, oh, well, you socialism, know. you can blame that to socialism and communism. It ruins yeah. everywhere it goes. It's it's just bizarre, right? Like the, the people who get it in, for example, like uh, northern India versus the people who don't get it, like kind of in the floodplains and on the coasts or like the, the pockets of like cultural differences in India, like Monero offers a solution that people who are from outside of India could, they wouldn't even begin to understand it unless they actually learn more about how it actually is in India. Yeah. <laughs> We have we have discussed potentially doing a Monerotopia in India in like 20, 2025. Which would be oh wow, be wild. <laughs> that would be I mean, so interesting. We, we yeah, just bring that. security. Yeah. Like, make sure you guys bring your own security. We gotta we gotta offer. We could do it. A safe, <laughs> place, a safe place. <laughs> Yeah, it's a safe place, but uh, the thing is, it's Monero, not any other crypto coin. That's the thing. I mean, Mon Monero is legal in India right now, right? Nope, no, uh, it's not. It's bad. not. It's not legal? It's not like a uh, underground-ish, like uh, no exchange will uh, use Monero. But, but and you cannot it's even not. trade. It has been banned in India. 
Peer to peer is legal, but if you can't use an exchange and uh, you yeah, can't... you can hold it like it's like very. If they get caught, you like there is a lot of trouble. Like it's like gray market black. What are what are these? Uh, buy you coin, Wazerex. Do you have you ever heard of those exchanges? Oh no, those are like worse. Those are so bad that uh, the uh, even the community are using like. Binance P two P, like it's so bad that the the Indian government have to ban those foreign exchanges recently. Just check out the news. I think, and then the, so right now, uh, right now, in, there's no way to buy Monero on a. Oh, there is like in local Monero. Yeah, there is a way to buy centralized exchange on a centralized exchange. On, on the centralized exchange, no, you are done. Even like uh, normal cryptocurrencies, they are starting to put restriction. I think they already have like uh, they will try to like harass the exchange owners or like the exchange owners are already co-opted by intelligence agencies. So uh, you can get the picture. So no withdrawal, yeah. no deposit. Oh, yeah, only deposit, but no withdrawal. So yeah, everything captured by centralized entity. What, yeah, what the people you know. What do you think of this idea of, you know, we talk about a lot, right? Um, building the Monero circular economy. What do you think of an early use case being uh, freelancers using Monero, like people like, let's say, like in India, yeah. providing freelancing services? Throughout, yeah, throughout actually, the world? it's a good idea. But I think compared to India, the Latin America countries, the mm -hmm. one in Argentina or El Salvador, Salvador, I think those are better targets. But yeah, if you want to make sure the underground economy is working, then India is also a good target. But legally, I don't see any way. Hmm. Thank you so much for jumping on today, man. This this has been great. Yeah, I've been seeing like the culture sh shift. I think Monero is actually shifting the culture even in other communities. Now, even like those maxis are starting talking about confidential transaction back again. Yeah, like even they are waking up that lightning doesn't, it's having issues and they are like, that they're moving on to, their people. Moving to liquid, yeah, they're, right? <laughs> they're moving to liquid. Like they are like using that like, that new Aqua wallet. Like no one, even they don't like their own products anymore. What I think so is really that, hilarious is that they've got the five stages of grief thing going on, where it was like um, they just. I mean, you saw how a bunch of people are starting to talk about Monero. Like, oh, Monero is like layer two Bitcoin. And it's like their bargaining stage for realizing that lightning is total bullshit and it's never going to fucking work. <laughs> and then, yeah, well, it's actually surprising. It's like people used like, to... No, Monero is layer one and your, your, your whole plan was trash is what happened. Yeah, it's actually surprising. People are talking about like Zcash team. They are like a, a CIA plots. But compared to them, I think the those block stream guys are more like nefarious the most like who even uses that liquid like why would why would you even okay you have a hardware company you have a satellite company but why would you even have a centralized side chain it makes no sense and you will have like the dev you will hire all the developer of the number one cryptocurrency it sounds it even looks nefarious you know that i had this saying like the most dangerous glowy is the person who repeats the the party policies of the glowies but isn't one himself right so the people who are the true believers of the propaganda are far more dangerous than the people who are paid to shill the propaganda because the very first repeater is the first person who gives it that that extra layer of credibility as a person who actually believes it. Um, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. We, like we, even Firo well, was, and Zcash like with all its flaws. Yeah, even with Firo and Zcash with all its flaws, you can still say they are doing some innovation with Halo 2 or like Lenanta Spark, but uh what are those liquid guys even doing they're just now 
making sure everyone jumps from lightning to liquid and stay trapped there without withdrawal or anything. Yeah, body was actually, I think he was talking about that not long, long ago. I, I didn't actually get to see the finish of his thoughts, but um, he was talking about making just enough changes to keep everybody a slave, but not making enough changes mm -hmm. to do anything substantial. It'd be interesting for him to finish. I mean, he probably did finish the thought. I just didn't read it, but. Are you talking about the, the post I made on Twitter? Yeah, I saw it last night before I put my kids to bed, and I, I only got to see like the first thing that you said, but I would like to hear more of that whole. I said um, the worst thing for crypto would be BTC gets a couple small upgrades that sort of like rekindle hope, but are insufficient for real progress. What'll happen is that'll just be milked for like another seven to eight years with marginal progress, and um, it'll look a lot like the contrived political cycle that's designed to stifle humanity. Oh yeah, I'm starting to see some comments, like the Indian ah. exchanges are worse. <laughs> like if you really look at the language, if you study the language and the culture and look what's happening even on the tutorial faces, People are starting getting fed up with the Indian exchanges. You have somebody who's who's in disagreement with you, uh, Raman or Roman. I can't see from here. Uh, jump on, man. Tell tell us tell us your thoughts. I just put the link in there. Yeah, so, I think in Monero, like uh, whoever sure. is like even in the Monero, everyone. I think all the governments are making list of them, so you have to be careful. Hopefully, we'll just get them to make a list of like everybody. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was listening uh, to. I, mean, I, I don't know if it, what this guy's reasoning is, but uh, I two P here. I mean, we've had a lot of Indian guests come on this show and say a lot of different things, but from the information that I have gathered from people who either live in India or work with India or whatever. This this guy is absolutely spot on. That is exactly what it's like. And Raman here, um, I would love if he would come up and argue his case. But the yeah, like is he's telling, like you can withdraw. Okay, I good luck withdrawing Monero. Good yeah. luck withdrawing any coin. Mm -hmm. If it's not a transparent surveillance coin. Privacy coin, you won't even see the picture of it. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, one of the things that I never hear people on, like, you know, like dark web threads or on, you know, 4chan or whatever. One of the things that I just don't think is brought up enough in the context of crypto is the the corruption and bribery problem in India is absolutely mind-boggling like foreign enterprises actually build in bribes and corruption into their cost estimates at this point so for example if you want to buy you know like uh for example pharmaceuticals that are made in india right you'll get this crazy crazy low price then you have to price in like 17 percent for bribes and it's like openly on the books at these companies even when you're like analyzing their stock prices and stuff that they build in the cost of bribery into doing business with india china is bad but even china you don't openly build in the cost of bribes you just add to the cost of doing business on that but it has become so normalized for the government to not let anything happen until they get their bribe in india right and Monero specifically offers a solution that I haven't seen anybody else offer right now, which is what happens in the shadows, nobody can ask for a bribe if they don't know about it, right? What happens in the shadows as far as like a contract negotiation, you can't even make an estimate for how much bribes you should be charging. Um, but the other thing is people who want to do legitimate business in India are punished ruthlessly by oh, using yeah, like, transparent ledgers or Indian oh, currency. You want to whatever. hear the capital gains tax. It's like 30%. And there is like a 
Trump tax deducted at source like TDS at one percent, and there is no losses. Yeah, exactly. Like even if you have profit or even if you have loss, you have to pay thirty percent tax as well as a TDS, which will kill the adoption anyway. So everyone yeah, is using so, like I mean, foreign come on, exchanges. Robin, like, come on the show and explain yeah. how this man is wrong. And because it's, yeah, it's it's like, like, all of this uh, up for yourself, you know. He's saying Monero is yeah. traded on every Indian exchange. So I don't know. That should be no, that's should be. not true. As well as the P2P one, you have to understand that the Indian exchanges are far more surveillance proof compared to the foreign exchanges as well as the underground market. What is the largest uh, exchange in India? Is it Binance? What uh, the... It's like some of the Wazirx or like Coin DCX. But okay, there is here's none. Now. Everyone is using and the greatest Indian exchange right now is still Binance. It's a foreign exchange can, because it's can you so buy, bad oh, right now. Can you buy surveillance coins in India and then take them and then do a swap for Monero? So, like for example, I can buy. Uh, yeah, it's still like possible here in the states, and then do a swap. Okay. Yeah, it's still possible if you want to pay the high fees of Bitcoin. Or, but yeah, it's like very limited. People and just to be clear, like, you can still up to this day get Monero on Binance in India. Are you saying you can't? You, you they won't let you withdraw it. So I'm starting to see. Oh yeah, you can use about. Binance. Like uh, it, it was still it was so popular because people can use privacy coins to just buy. Use Binance and just get privacy coin, or just use any foreign exchange like KuCoin or any other exchange. But the thing is, so, uh, even you know local the, Monero like is working fine. That, you know the I, army of normies that'll use like Robinhood or whatever on their phone, and they'll do all other like exchange trading and all that on Robinhood. And like the friction point is when you go to try to withdraw right it's either you cash out or you know you get put on some list to wait for having your monero transferred to a wallet somewhere i'm starting to see what ramen is saying i think that what he doesn't understand is if your goal isn't to put fiat into an exchange and do some trading and then take fiat out if your goal is to actually liquidate your holdings into a Monero wallet as XMR, you can't like even the places where you supposedly can like the clearing is next to impossible. And they're also going to they're going to deduct your capital gains at the point of the attempt to liquidate. Um, in fact, I'm looking at it right now. This but, is, but wait, wait, hold on. But just to be right. super clear, is can you currently buy Monero on Binance today in India and withdraw? Yes, yes or no? Right now, yeah. I think with the monetization tag, I think everyone is avoiding it. But yeah, it's still possible, but very high risk. Okay, okay. Yeah, but part of the problem too is if, if you're not liquidating for fiat there's an impossible number of extra steps right it, it's so it, yeah it, if you want to really is, buy and hold monero i think the best one is local monero exchange yeah because i mean it looks like ramen is right yeah like in theory you could do all of that but just looking at some of the basic steps of what it takes to do that it's I mean, it's almost as complicated as using lightning, right? It's like, who wants to do this crap? Raman, you're welcome to jump up. We put the link there. Uh, Tony, yeah. you want you want to move on? Do we still have more news? <laughs> we have just one more thing. Oh, more? Let's see. Let's get to it. Might as well get to it. Yeah. So it's just one more minute, and then we can we can discuss more. So it kind of ties into uh, the German protest that we were discussing. So this is the Croatian um, uh, prime minister, um, Mislav Kolakusic, I think his name is, um, talking about the farmers. So give me one second. Oh, no, wait, no sound. Oh, no sound? OK. Yeah. Um, I don't know what you have to do, how you do that. OK, give me one second. 
no worries, no worries. Uh, yeah. Anybody did it, did ramen drop up? No. Is this that you will eat the bugs? <laughs> oh man, I love this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this is a very good video. Yeah. Um. Okay, you should be able to to hear now. So. Danas se raspravljamo o ulozi vas poljoprivrednika u zelenoj tranziciji. Vaša uloga je iznimno jednostavna. Vi morate nestati. Zašto? Zato jer smetate novoj suludoj ideologiji potpune kontrole na stanovništvo Mreovske unije, za koje će u skorijoj budućnosti jedina hrana biti umjetno stvorena hrana nadopunjena uvezenim kukcima sa istoka. Normalnu biohranu moći će kupovati i jesti isključivo bogati. Rat protiv poljoprivrednika je započeo u Nizuzemskoj. Tamo se farmerima temeljem zakona želi oduzeti njihovo zemljište i predati u ruke građevinskom sektoru, jer je navodno poljoprivredna opasna po zemljište i stanovništvo. Oni se ne daju tako se neće dati ni poljoprivrednici u Hrvatskoj i drugim zemljama Europske unije. Hvala. Also, by the way, um, I said he's the prime minister. I'm sorry, he's not the prime minister. He's just a member of the parliament. So he's not the actual prime minister of Croatia. Um, but I'm, I'm so happy that he, he got on the stage on the European parliament, at the European parliament, and he got to, to um, say what he said. Okay, can you translate that? Because uh, I did not understand that, and I can't read it, so. <laughs> oh, okay, oh, sorry. Any kind okay. of translation? The war against the farmers. The purpose of this war is for them to stop existing. Um, the land will be transferred over to uh, the construction sector, and your only food will be synthetically created or imported bugs. And only oh. the rich will be allowed to buy and eat organic um, because you're interfering with this new insane ideology of top-down control. That's pretty much the bottom line. Appreciate it. Thanks. Yep. Wow. Uh, uh, was, was that all the news, Tony? Yes. Mm -hmm. Melatron is saying, maybe you could talk about the recent donations that have been made to the children of a small community of Formosa. Yeah, we talk about it all. I think we spoke about it last episode. Um, Tony, I don't know if you could bring it up. A squel, a squel of Bitcoin, who I met in person when I went to Argentina. He's the guy that actually convinced me to go to Formosa. I was like on the fence a little bit. It was a big trip. He's like, yo, you got to come check out Monero Town. He's a big BTC privacy guy. Um, but he's also, he's also out there teaching people about Monero because Monero is kind of already gained attention in this small town Iberata in Formosa but recently he's been posting he's been like he's been teaching the, the young children of Iberate, um about sovereign money he's been teaching them about non-fiat money he's he's a good educator if you look at his tweets he's been doing some interesting things trying to simplify things for the kids teach them the importance of sound money and he's onboarding them to Bitcoin and Monero. And he recently raised some money, I think mostly from the Monero community, uh, to buy buy the locals' cell phones to get them up and running, get their own wallets, which is which is really nice to see. So I don't know if you can find his uh, tweets. I'm trying to do it now. To squell a Bitcoin. And if you if you haven't seen it, you should definitely watch uh, Monero Talk episode two ninety five with uh, Nate Eat Sleep Crypto because his quote I really liked it because he was talking about every Bitcoin maximalist is secretly a Monero maximalist and yeah. that, uh, it's Bitcoin Bitcoin in the streets and Monero in the sheets. I was like, <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome! That, that that's a good like T shirt. Uh, I like. I'll have to get I'll have to get Sunny to that. That was that was a really fantastic like episode, and I loved that quote. As much as I love that shirt, I can't wear it because I'm Bitcoin both place or I mean I'm Monero <laughs> both places. Like I'm not Bitcoin anywhere anymore. Yeah, that's me. That's me too. <laughs> that's good as that. 
I love how there's just kids wearing Monero stuff. My yeah. kids walk around with like Linux or Monero propaganda <laughs> yeah. on their shirts all the time too. It's amazing. Yeah. So this is uh, the kids that he's teaching here. They're from like the local like like Indian tribes of the area. We went and visited them when we were there. Um, we brought them food, which we purchased with Monero. That was Alessandro's idea. We went to like the the bodega that accepted Monero and the bakery, and we just bought a bunch of stuff. And in return, they gave us stuff to then donate. We went and donated it, but uh, he's been hanging out with them, teaching them. It, it's really nice to see. And yeah, I don't know if you saw the cell phone one, but he, he got one of them a cell phone. This, by the way, guys, is where Copa Monero will be taking place in Ibirata. Hmm. We'll be talking about that more soon. But, I, yeah. I'm yeah. so stoked for that. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm very excited. So very We're making the poster now. I have Siddhartha making the poster. Hmm. We'll, we'll start talking about it more soon. We worked out a deal with Alessandro. He's going to help us get it off the ground. Right now, it looks like it's going to be 12 local teams that are going to comp be competing over the course of a couple of months, like three months, let's say, that will be playing games on the week, primarily the weekends. And then we're going to live stream all the games. Be hooked up. Uh, Alessandro found this, this, this like talented local uh, video, like video company that does this for, for other local sporting events where they've, they do a good job at live streaming the games with some good camera angles. Um, and emceeing the game in Spanish. So people will be able to tune in, watch Copa Monero as it evolves. I think it'll be exciting. Maybe, maybe, maybe there'll be some uh, some gambling taking place on the side. Who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen? <laughs> and that'll be cool. <laughs> yeah, if there was some really exciting and fun and joyous gambling that we do not condone or recommend in any way, where a person was having an absolute blast. <laughs> gambling <laughs> unsanctioned by this show uh, and then uh, on copa on copa monero the official copa monero.com website that's what we'll you know we'll show all the teams and then we'll, we'll keep updates show all the stats <laughs> so people can have a you know properly assess their favorite team and watch them it should be it should be fun i'm excited <laughs>